My name is Philip Arthur Moore. I am a developer at a company called Automatic. Uh, we are passionate about making the web a better place. We make things like uh, Jetpack and WordPress.com and a lot of other really cool stuff that you've probably seen, like a Kismet and Paul Daddy and a lot of other really neat things that we work on. Uh, I work on the theme team at Automatic and basically what my job is, my job title is Theme Wrangler. A uh, Theme Wrangler is just someone who wrangles themes. All we do all day is we think about themes, we make them, we break them, we design them, we develop them. Uh, we are at a website called ThemeShaper.com which has some really cool things on it like how to develop themes really well, uh, best practices for theme development, uh, tools for checking the themes that you not only submit to WordPress.org, but that you might also potentially submit to WordPress.com. Uh, so what makes a theme? Let's talk about a couple examples. This theme is uh, called Blog Simple. It's on WordPress.com. It is a premium theme. And the thing that's interesting about this theme is that it has a really large header area and it's, you know, it's like got this sticky featured area. This is a feature of themes that we use. It's, it's a standard kind of blog theme. You've got your uh, excerpt, your sidebar, all that sort of thing. This is another theme that I designed this and developed it. It's sort of like a really simple, really traditional blog theme that is the predecessor of two themes called Andreas 04 and Andreas 09. It's like a mobile-ready theme that works really well on the iPhone, it works really well on the iPad, and it works very well on desktops. And it's got this really large, brilliant header image area that goes into WordPress themes that you all are familiar with. Another premium theme on WordPress.com is a pretty standard blog theme. So the, the sort of uh, theme of this talk of themes is that what goes into a lot of normal themes in WordPress it's just standard blog functionality that we've all become accustomed to. There's a, post, there's a blog title, there's a blog description, there's a custom menu, there's a sidebar, there's an area where you can have your posts in your featured image. You can do really cool things like have three images that are pulled directly from all of the uploaded galleries in a uh, post to use as the featured area. There's another theme that we developed that does really cool things with like parallax effect when you scroll it, the fishies swim across the the screen as you're scrolling down, we call that a parallax uh, sort of effect, which is nice. And then we have another theme that's very seasonal. It's like a monster theme for October 31st. Do you all celebrate October 31st? But you know that's how it works. Okay. We just eat a lot of candy and that's, that's what we do. And there's another theme that's very photo heavy. Um, it's ideation and intent that we also develop for WordPress.com. Uh, Chandra mentioned, I call him Chandra in New York, but Chandra. We mentioned that, so my beginning with theme development actually, uh, I was working at Graph Paper Press with Chandra back in 2008 to 2010. And what we focused on a lot of the times was really uh, photo heavy themes. Um, and the reason we did that, as he said, is that it basically changed the way that photographers interacted with the web. And it changed the way that Photographers who use WordPress interact with the web, and so we have photo themes, and we have standard news themes. So this gets back to the question, what makes a theme? And really all that makes a theme is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, and PHP. That's basically what all of those themes are made up of. This is the building block of pretty much every theme that you look into. WordPress, the software, is built on PHP. A lot of the times, as when you're growing up or developing as a theme developer, when you're kind of coming into your own, what do you do? You check out uh, 2010, 2011, and 2012. You copy paste a lot of that PHP, and the way that you make a theme into your own is just modify things like the images and modify things like the JavaScript. The underlying HTML and the underlying PHP of it you change sometimes, but not as much in my estimation, as you would something like CSS, right? So with these five sort of building blocks of themes, right, PHP, CSS, uh, HTML, JavaScript, and images, there are a lot of different approaches that we can take towards building a theme from 
from idea to, to conceivement to actually having it. So I'll take a couple steps back. When I first started developing themes, I was a freelancer. Okay? Uh, I freelanced for about a year and a half or two years. After that, I worked for a theme shop, a premium theme shop, and now I work for Automatic. And so the perspective of the theme development has changed as my position of theme development has changed. When I was a freelancer, I did everything from scratch. I would have a client who contacted me and say that they needed something done, and I would probably gut out 2010 or 2011 or whatever. I would post little snippets. I'd go to the codex on wordpress.org and build whatever theme needed to be done. I'd say maybe the theme had two or three files in it. It was really sort of slim. It wasn't even something that we could consider a WordPress theme in the traditional sense. So when I say starting from scratch, I pretty much mean going through the development of having a HTML, CSS, images, and JavaScript sort of template all laid out for you before you even touch WordPress. And then kind of plugging in those functionality or those template tags from WordPress uh, to make it into a theme. And that's sort of one approach uh, that we take. If you're a theme shop or something like that, you're probably not building things from scratch. Things from scratch, right? Uh, the other approach, or a second approach, is building themes using a parent and child uh, relationship. All, all of you, I assume, if you're developing themes, are familiar with what a parent theme is. Uh, when I think of parent themes, I always think of something like 2011. I don't know if you've ever heard of this theme. It's not very popular. <laughs> Um, but it's, this is what we usually say is a parent theme is a theme that in many ways never changes. There are updates that happen to it, but in many ways you have a theme like 2010, 2011, or 2012, which are the bundle themes that come packaged with WordPress uh, core. 2010 I think is out now, so I think all that shipping is 2011 and 2012. And usually what we do to modify that is build a theme that relies on the functionality and the style sheet of that parent theme. But you also have this separate folder with your own styles and your own template files that essentially override whatever is happening in that parent theme. And you call a couple dependencies and you call that parent theme, for example, I would say, I want to call the theme 2011 or 2010, but I still have an individual theme. So the relationship is, you're building a theme that depends on a parent, okay? And that parent really needs to kind of stay set and not change a whole lot. Another approach that we use is uh, theme frameworks. Off the top of your head, I mean, when you think of theme frameworks, you're probably thinking of things like Genesis, okay? I, I don't know if you got, well, so you've heard of Studio Press, right? It is a premium theme shop, and Genesis is essentially the, the definition, if you were to look at the codex of a theme framework, is basically, if I could sum it up in a sentence, I would say that a theme framework is a bundle or a library of code that's used to develop other themes rapidly off of it. It's like a code library. So whereas a parent theme like 2010 or 2011 has that code specifically developed for 2010 or 2011 or just for that theme, a theme uh, framework like uh, Genesis, or at Graph Paper Press, there was a theme called Base. What we would do is have something like, this is a normal theme. Can you guys see that okay, kind of? This is a normal uh, index.php file of the premium theme Newsy. Okay. And the idea behind this is that if you look into an index.php file and you're, and you're a WordPress theme developer, you're going to recognize exactly what this does. You have your standard loop. You've got your if have posts, if while, while you have posts, do the post, and you've got all these things that happen in pretty much every WordPress theme. And that's how we develop things like themes from scratch, right, or developing template files that overwrite parent themes. A theme framework would look something like this, okay, to where you just have something that says Genesis. Like, I, if, if you are not a theme developer, or even if you are, 
if you look into an index.php file and you see this, how do you know what to do? And it's really laden with comments about do not edit this file. And the reason you don't edit files for theme frameworks is that you have ways of overriding uh, functions in theme frameworks in child themes. It's really complicated. It's like it's it's really is to be looked at sort of like a library of code. And another approach is starter themes. Okay. The idea behind a starter theme is that if, if you were to, so a couple of the popular starter themes right now are a theme called Bones and of course a theme called Underscores, uh, which is developed by us at Automatic. You can pretty much contribute to it even if you don't work at Automatic. Um, the whole idea behind a starter theme is that you look at it like it's a toolbox of code. And the idea is that you start with this bundle of, of, so let's say you have a project that needs to get done. Let's say you're repairing a car or something and you have a physical toolbox. Well, you're going to have a lot of tools inside of that box that you can take advantage of. And for a project, when you're using a starter theme, you only take the tools that you need and you throw away everything else. In a theme framework, a lot of the times what you do is use that entire suite a functionality to build your child themes. In a starter theme, what you're doing is taking a batch of code, hacking it up, saying, I'm cutting this out, I'm deleting it, I don't need this, and the rest of it I'm going to keep, adapt it, and modify it to my needs. When you install a starter theme, like uh, Bones or Underscores or whatever, chances are it's going to look something like this, which is really beautiful, right? Look nice. I could just drop this into WordPress.org and it's fine. We're going to sell a lot of these. Uh, this is the way it works, but basically, sort of the, the, the essential idea behind the starter theme is that you've got really sensible typography resets. You've got very sensible resets in terms of defining content widths and making your theme responsive out of the box or making it mobile ready out of the box. So that to go a couple steps back in this talk, when I was talking about the five steps of, or the five things that make up a theme, the things that are changing a lot of the times are HTML, I'm sorry, CSS and your images, right? It's a lot of what's changing. The idea behind the starter theme is that the HTML is set for you, the PHP is mostly set for you. There are things that you need to add to it, there are things that you need to take away, but you're spending a lot of time on the designing of it, the iteration on it, the development of it. It's, it's a pretty rapid process. You take the code you have, you build it, and you're done. If you guys are theme developers or premium theme developers, if you have like, if you get to anywhere in your career where you're developing five themes or ten themes or fifteen themes, you will reach a point in your development career where, where you have to ask yourself, do we want to have something that we can rely on every time we build a theme, or are we going to build every single thing from scratch? I'll talk about a couple of the advantages and disadvantages of each of these approaches. Uh, so if we're talking about starting from scratch, right, who is this good for? This is really good for the client. Okay? This is good for client work. This is good if you're doing freelance work. Uh, the positive of it is that you have absolute total control. You can do whatever you want with it. It's super duper. Uh, easy to do whatever you want and not have to rely on any problems coming from the code changing because it's completely up to you. The problem with things like starting from scratch is that it's extremely time consuming. So if someone submits a project brief to you and says, I need something done, a client, right? You're probably quoting that client at anywhere from $1,500 to 5,000 US dollars for, like on average, right, for a project. And it's because you're doing everything from scratch and it's pretty time consuming. But you have a lot of control. Uh, so the parent and child theme relationship, this is really, really good for users, okay? So going back to the, let, let's take 2011 as an example, right? The reason I say that this is a really, really super quick and easy approach is that let's say you have a user who comes to you and says, I would really like to change something about your theme. Uh, how can I do this? What you can say is, 
create a child theme, create a really simple style sheet, and overwrite our styles. This is what the parent and child relationship is all about. Uh, even in plugins, for example, like Jetpack, we've basically eliminated the whole process of creating a child theme because you have custom CSS in the back end through a plugin that basically just overwrites the theme, the theme CSS, right? So you can either do this from, a, from the perspective of a child theme or you can either do this from the perspective of a plugin. But the idea is that you're overriding things either in the style sheet, if you're getting more advanced and you're overriding things in template files, sure, sure you'll need to create a child theme, right? The idea is that it's really, really super quick and easy for users. If you're a beginning theme de developer, if you're a beginning theme user and you want to make changes, take a look into the parent and child theme relationship. The problem with this is that the changes have really, really high impact on the children. So whatever happens to that parent theme is inherited by the children. If you were to go into your WordPress dashboard and click on updates, and you would see an update to one of the bundle themes, like 2011 or 2012, and you clicked update, whatever you have going on in your child theme is going to inherit whatever changes have happened to that parent theme. So that's something to keep in mind when developing in this sort of relationship between frameworks. This is really, really good for developers. Really good for developers. Uh, I think we used to have a discussion within Graph Paper Press of, well, do we want to keep developing themes or do we want to develop a framework on which we can rapidly spin off these themes? Yeah. And we came up with base. Well, this was really, really good for us because we understood it. And the idea is that there, there are things like you can have maximum control with things like uh, action hooks and you can filter content and you can hook into the theme in different places. You'll have like do something, do underscore something action here, whatever, whatever. Basically allowing you to hook into those theme files really easily as a developer and make changes without touching that framework. Uh, the problem with this approach is that it's really, really hard. It's really difficult even for a developer. It is uh, really, really hard for users. If, if you were supporting a theme like Genesis, okay, if you're supporting a theme like Genesis or whatever, or you're supporting a theme like Base and a user says, I need to change something, how do I do this? Instead of saying, go into the theme file and make a quick change, you would say, write a function that, over, that hooks into this theme file that does this and this and overwrites all the content and the users get frustrated and sad. I think this is what happened. Um, and finally, to, to run so quickly, there are starter themes, right? Uh, this is really good for mostly everyone, especially if you're a theme developer who wants to spin up themes really rapidly. The pros of this are easy to learn, right? You avoid repetitive work. It ensures best practices because chances are with a theme like bones or uh, underscores, you have a lot of people contributing to that starter theme that we can all use to develop on. Best practices means things like data sanitation and validation. Best practices means always using the WordPress core settings API to make settings, right? We've just rolled out an update that supports the infinite scroll release in Jetpack and do underscores. There's also the uh, things like integrating theme options into the theme customizer, which is now a piece of WordPress, right? Now, you remember how there, there's like a separate page for theme options? We're really trying to get rid of that into just a one-stop shop where you go to the theme customizer, you make your changes, it's all live. As soon as you hit save and close, your theme is done and you don't have to set your options. So this gets me to underscore S, or as at Automatic, we call underscores. And underscores is the starter theme. If you guys are theme developers, but so, I'm not going to push that you use underscores, right? But I will push that you look at it and that you understand it as a starter theme to possibly either forking it and creating your own starter theme or using it to develop themes. And the reason I said this is because, like I said, there's a lot of oversight on the code. There's a lot of con contribution to it. You can actually, like I said, you don't have to be an automatic employee to contribute to underscores or things like Bones. It's all like on things like GitHub. It's all sort of open, out in the open. Everyone's looking at it. And this is why we use Starter Theme. 
Underscores is, like I said, it's just a starter theme for WordPress. So to quickly go through this, all these blogs I showed you, like all of these, right? Uh, these are all on underscores. Like they're, they look completely different, right? But the foundation of it is pretty much all underscores. And this is why we use it, because it's really easy to spin up stuff really quickly. And a lot of the times we're just adding in quickly fun quick functionality to it, styling it, and we're done, and it takes a really quick time. If you're submitting themes to things like WordPress.org and WordPress.com, then it's really nice for us to see, wow, they're developing on this theme, on this starter theme that we know the code is set, we know the code is good. Okay. Underscores.me, you can also find us on, on GitHub. If you are a user, go to underscores.me. If you are a developer, go to GitHub. I really encourage you to take a look at this. Um, the idea is that you fork it and make little copies of your own starter thing. And thank you.